Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 16 of Anime on Draft. I'm going to be your host once again. Uh, this is Drew, joined, as always, by Rolando. Yo, yo. And uh, Alec. Hello, my friends. Hi. That was creepy. Ignore that. Um, <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, we yeah. have a little bit of a special yeah. episode here today. What, what are you guys doing? <laughs> we have a little bit of a special episode. Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> we have a little bit of a special episode today. Okay, good. Um, we're joined here by uh, one of our good friends, uh, Mark. Uh, Mark, you uh, want to say hi? Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, we'll be talking to wow, Mark. Mark. Don't uh, fart into the mic. Sorry. <laughs> we'll be talking uh, to Mark uh, in a little bit. Um, you know, we have uh, some general questions and things like that. But before we do that, we wanted to go ahead and uh, crack open these beers to loosen everybody up a little bit. So, uh this week was released. my choice. <laughs> Ooh. Um, anyway, Ooh. this week is... Uh, <laughs> this was my choice. Um, I'm bringing it back to the IPAs. Um, we or I went ahead and picked a Blast Point uh, Brewing Company beer. Um, I'm sure if you are aware of the brewery, you've heard of the Sculpin. Um, I chose a Sculpin, but a flavored Sculpin for us this week. It is the Pineapple uh, Sculpin. Um, Pineapple. Pineapple uh, Sculpin. So it's a little bit of a flavored um, version of the IPA that is the Sculpin beer. Um, so with without further ado, do you guys want to pour these out? Yes. Sure yeah. thing. What kind of cup so while are you guys we're, using? Uh, what's Just that? a normal glass. What kind yeah, of glass are you guys using? Standard pint normal glass. Normal pinto? Mm -hmm. yeah. Pint? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're all using the same thing. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So uh, while we're uh, getting these open, uh, Mark, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of your beer preferences and uh, things of that nature? Um, sure. Yeah, I'm definitely a, an IPA fan. I like darker ales as well. Uh, I'm not too big on saisons, even though a lot of people really prefer them. I like that kind of like fruity taste. Uh, same thing with a lot of like wheat beers. I'm not too big of a fan. I feel like my mm. beer tasting palate has changed a lot because started drinking like shock tops and blue moons and now it's like that that just isn't my thing anymore you know i grew up i grew up do you not do you not oh. like the taste or is it just no like uh i it's not that i don't like it I it's it's just up. like too heavy now and it's, it's not as like shock flavorful top? yeah a blue moon's still like good like i'll drink a blue moon now and then um but i you know i'm not like gonna go out of my way to, to have a blue moon if there's mm -hmm. other options, I feel like uh, I feel like that's yeah. pretty similar to my taste too, because like I wasn't a huge like IPA person, and now that's like the majority of what I drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. So I, it's just it's your palate developing. I think that's kind of a, a major factor. He's going. Have up. you? Um, I, yeah, I'm a real man. <laughs> I know. I know you've heard of Blast Point before. Have you ever had the uh, Sculpin or any of the ide ideations of? Uh, yeah, Sculpin? actually. Um, grew up really close to the ballast point brewery the the main one mm -hmm. that's in san diego uh, i've been I to do. the yeah i've been to the one in miramar the new one that's like this huge awesome brewery so if you ever get a chance to go check it out definitely worth a trip um but yeah yeah i've tasted a lot of beers from ballast point uh, i've had the sculpin plenty of times i actually have a couple of the mango sculpin ipa okay in my fridge right now and i was hoping you guys chose that one because you know, i just randomly have some <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah definitely. life ain't that easy, Mark. Yeah, it ain't that easy. I know. <laughs> what a shame. Too bad. <laughs> uh, but no, I've, I, bad I think I've only had this pineapple sculpin um, one other time. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, was uh, it the boat times? Um, yes, it was on the boat times. <laughs> What do you, uh, you guys have it poured out? Uh, have you taken a drink yet? Or yes. Yeah. Have not. What uh? What do you guys? What are you guys thinking about this one? Well, I mean, I've had this one before, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Mm -hmm. I also rate the normal Sculpin as one of my top IPAs. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do not really like this one. This specific flavor. Do you dislike pineapple? I. It's not that I dislike pineapple. 
I've had other, you know, like tropical IPAs where they put, you know, pineapple and stuff in it. But for some reason, this just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't click with me. I feel like it doesn't do it for you. Yeah. For some reason, like it just, for me, it just feels like it's detracting from the Sculpin. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I really enjoy the Sculpin, but for some reason, this one just doesn't click well with me. It's not a bad beer, but it's not, you know, in my opinion, great. Just I was um, kind of with you originally because I love the original Sculpin. That's, again, like you said, one of my favorite IPAs as well. Um, and at first I was just like, you know, eh, it's just like there's a little bit more citrus. I don't really get pineapple. And then as I like kept drinking it, I got more of like this strong aftertaste of like super citrusy, juicy pineapple. And I I really like it. It kind of grew on me. It took me a, drinking a couple like the first time I had it. Uh, Cause like you said before, it's like, and this is meh. It's not bad, not good, whatever. But after I drank a couple and like I noticed that flavor developing uh, as like the aftertaste and things like that, it it really grew on me. I I really like the citrusy flavor that it kind of gives. Yeah, I mean, I do like the grapefruit sculpin. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that was the first one that I had before I actually I, had the I, regular sculpin. Oh, yeah. Nice. I I too like the grapefruit, but um, and I thought when I first tried this one as well, like I thought like, Oh, grapefruit, it's already better. Like whatever. But as I'm drinking it more and more, I think I'm liking this one a little bit better. I like pineapple more than I like grapefruit in general. So maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. Um, and to me, the grapefruit is a little tart, like a little too tart. Um, it kind of cuts through the IPA bitterness well, but for, Mm -hmm. for me, I like the crisp finish of the juicy pineapple. That's what's kind of, kind of doing it for me mm-hmm. you know, um, what, do you, what do you think alec you're being a, a kind of quiet guy over there <laughs> i'm actually sitting here trying not to laugh <laughs> because Why? i'm sitting here noticing that that i keep hearing this whoosh, 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 oh, coming from mark <laughs> i think it's mark think, mark you keep think, moving yeah, your phone he's, oh, yeah really? he's moving his phone <laughs> yeah. around and it's going it's going oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just sitting I'll here trying it. not to bust up laughing. It's like so difficult. Hand. Mark, I, I saw okay. Mark doing that whole thing, and he's just like t- yeah. tossing his phone around in his phone. hand. My bad. I'll, I'll put it down. <laughs> Dude, I had my head below my mic, just like chuckling to myself for the, for the past like minute. And I'm just like, oh god, this is. I really hope this isn't getting on the recording. It's just gonna be like. <laughs> whoosh, 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 whoosh. No, no, I'll I'll boost it up so it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice, so nice. so you get it for sure. Like, oh, welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> He's got a fidget the, spinner. The fidgety. He doesn't phone. put it down. <laughs> fidget phone. Fidget get phone. this man. Get this man two fidget spinners. We gotta call him down. Stat. <laughs> He's one in each hands and one on top of his feet too. <laughs> um, as for the beer, um, I, I uh, so you all know, I'm not a big IPA guy. I'm actually like the opposite of you people. You, you've all said you people. You you've people. all said that you as your palate has changed. You have like grown to enjoy IPAs. As my palate has changed, I have grown to dislike IPAs in comparison to other things. Because I used to like IPAs, and now I just don't can't drink them for whatever reason. But that said, I do like this beer. <laughs> um, I I have never had the Sculpin. Uh, I what? probably have, but I don't remember mm. what it tastes like. Maybe, wow. and uh, I don't really remember it. But uh, I this one. It's it's like, you know, IPA, it's got the bitter. But what I like about it is that fruity aftertaste that you were talking about, Drew. You get it especially, I mean, pardon pardon this, but you get it a lot when you burp. Um, it really <laughs> is apparent there. Um, but that flavor is helping to, like, kind of balance the bitterness for me and making it more palatable, palatable for me. Um, so I'm actually able to drink this pretty freely, and I'll probably buy this again. Yeah. So... I like the color too. The color's typical IPA, but it's nice. Yeah, that classic. Nice golden. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like beer. And it it's got smells. Head retention too. Definitely, yeah, it, looks like it beer. smells super I mean, yeah. citrusy. Yeah, when I first poured it out, it it grew, which was surprising. But mm-hmm. yeah, it really foams up. Mm-hmm. It, it really, really foams up, and then the, it sticks on the side of the glass, mm-hmm. on whatever side you're you're not drinking from, I guess. Yeah. Uh, kind of. But I mean, uh, it, it's appealing to look at yeah <clears throat> Bla- blast point is kind of blown up in like the past like i'd say like two or three years i mean they've been like bought out and mainstream now for a little bit um the thing that 
disappoints me about that is their beers are really expensive now. They didn't used to be this expensive. Um, I know you guys are saying like this six pack was about sixteen dollars. I got it on sale yeah, at Bedmo for about eleven. Um, I was but that's pretty. I'm like, this is local. Yeah, but that's pretty typical for this. I mean, it's like it's one of the premier, I guess you would say, craft beer or craft breweries in San Diego, um, which is now like this mecca or this hub for all these different craft beers and things like that. Um, and so compare that to like the Coronado Brewery, which we've had uh, in the past, um, where you can get a six pack for eight dollars, this being uh close to ten dollars more depending on the situation especially if you like go on the east coast or things like that you're gonna pay a lot for this uh for this beer um but at the same time you know although they're mainstream and stuff like that they do a couple things right you know their marketing is really good um if you ever want to check out their twitter they always do a good job there um i like the um all their art and different things you know keeping with like the nautical themes of their brewery and things like that so overall, you know, I'm I'm always really impressed with their brewery and always willing to try, you know, different things from them. They they did do one beer wrong, personally. I I think so, and I <laughs> I know Drew agrees. And it is the uh, what is it called the 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 red that red fish beer? What it's like is it Ruby Rose, not Ruby Rose. That's Ruby Rose. Ruby. <laughs> Are you sorry? Rose something? You're talking about it's, <laughs> it's Rose. Yeah, it's a transgender right? beer. <laughs> uh, it's um it's the one with the beta fish on gender, it gender neutral brand. yeah the beta fish it's got the beta fish it's uh sea rose sea oh, rose sea rose i haven't had that yeah. one I've never had that either. it's not very good don't um, it's like it's it's supposed to have like these chart tart cherry notes yeah, and it's, it's just like cherry it's gross it tastes like what it's a tart so cherry bad. wheat ale Oh, it, that's, it, not, so that's not a good combination it's, of it, it's gross. No, it's not. <laughs> it tastes like it's supposed to have been like a sour. Yeah. But gone but wrong. Not a sour. Like they wanted it to be a sour wheat ale. And so they used tar- like cherries and tartness. Right. And it's just like the tart cherry does not mix with a wheat ale. Like when I sit there and I drink just a wheat ale, I'm not thinking, mm, you know what would be really good in this? Let me go buy some cherries and just drop them in there. Yeah. Like, no, that just doesn't sound good to me. <laughs> and so the beer, like you take that first like sip at first, it's like, I was like, okay, this isn't so bad. It's got, you know, it kind of tastes like chair or like wheat ale, you know, it smells like a wheat ale. And then all of a sudden this weird tart fruity sourness comes in and you're like, Oh, yeah. is this just like they wanted to make a sour and they were like, Oh, it went bad. Let's call it a tart cherry wheat ale. Like, I don't, yeah. like, I don't, we, they just didn't do we it. talk, nice. we talk a lot about like drinkability and stuff like that. And this, that beer has like no drinkability. You take like it's three sips and you're bold. like, I'm, I'm fucking done. See, like, see yeah. so yeah. if you remember, we were talking about, um, what brewery was it from San Diego? Um, Coronado. Was it Cor- no no no? It was a different one. What were we about for what? We were talking, what were we talking about, about um, beer flavors or whatever. And I I did uh-huh. mention that I felt like Ballast Point kind of fell short in terms of like you know putting their their more popular beers and then adding like a flavor twist to them. And I thought that a mm. lot of times it fell short. Like I was actually referencing like the pineapple sculpin, the mango one, yeah. and. The mango even keel. I'm yeah. not a fan of that one. The yeah, watermelon Dorado. Mm. Same here. I'm not a fan of that one. Yeah. So was that when we were talking about uh, Belching Beaver and like the it, the mango IPA? They yeah. Have and because I actually I was like ask that is one. A Belching Beaver. I actually like the mm, Belching yeah. Beaver mango IPA, but Belching Beaver does a really good job of varying their own like existing recipes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like I like the grapefruit sculpin. And then you guys don't like that whatever row C rose or whatever C rose. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like sometimes they fall a bit short in terms of like the flavor infusions. I yeah. I there's mean, a, there's a the couple. Tart cherry, um, I agree. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of uh, the infusions that I want to try. One is a totally new beer. It's like their take on a sour. It's called Sour Wench. I think they make it with blackberry, yeah. but they like yeah. just released it. So it's not like everywhere yet. So I want to try that. Also, I was looking for this one. This is one of the beers I wanted to pick for this week, too, was the Habanero Sculpin. We talked about mm-hmm. the Rogue mm-hmm. Brewery, um, the Sriracha one that we had earlier. So I'm curious to try more like spicy beers and things like that. So <laughs> I'm on the lookout for those, too. But uh no luck so yeah, far. When you guys uh, reviewed that uh, sriracha beer, I was I was already interested, 
and I think mm-hmm. I might go pick one up oh, just yeah. to try it. You should do it. Yeah, it Honestly, crazy. I would say do it. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it, it. It, right, Mark? It's like that super iconic bottle, and you always oh, see yeah. it. You're like, I don't, I don't know if I want to try you. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, like, if you see it everywhere and people are saying that it's decent, I mean, why not try it? Yeah. yeah. Try you it with food. You need to food. get the Zumbar. Oh, the you should get the Zumbar next so. time you're in San Diego. Ah, uh, that's a good. Yeah. It's next a, time mm, you're really in San Diego. Man. Sure. Oh man. Actually, next time in oh, we're in San Diego, man. we should. Uh, that's the we highest. We should all go to I've Ballast given. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be cool. We sure. just have to make uh-huh. a reservation. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> that they changed. Now. They changed the yeah. the way it works because you and me went Rolando that one time, and we were just like, "Well, which bar are we gonna sit at?" And we just sat outside. Yeah. But uh, and then what was it like a month later? They're like, "All right, now to go, you have to have a reservation for the restaurant." It's, it's a restaurant it's like, now Fuck this. instead of just a tasting That's room. Stupid. Yeah. But we'll go. Crazy. We'll get a reservation. We'll eat appetizers and drink a bunch of beer. That's Some we'll appies. Do. Cool. Some yeah. appies. Apps. Some appies. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is like a total like side note, but Rolando, your uh, your parents' house in San Diego is by that oh, one yeah. Mexican restaurant with the hot Cheetos in the burrito. <laughs> like, I want to try that fucking yeah. place. It's also <laughs> down the street, so essentially bomb. from uh, from Ballast Point mm. and Ale Smith. Good and deal. Green Flash. Good deal. And, yeah, everything. And everything. all the all the breweries <laughs> yeah, all in the breweries. Breweries. <laughs> And all of them. There's a Miramar brewery too now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all yep. it's all crazy over there. Apparently, uh, Chula Vista is becoming like a brewery headquarters. I was driving down there the other day, cheap. and there's yeah, and there's like on Main Street in Chula Vista, there is like four breweries that are being built right now with like oh, huge yeah. like the fucking uh, silos. I forget what they're called. Um, where they have hold like ferment the beer and shit like that. There's like mm-hmm. four of these things popping up, so we might have to take a trip down there as well when they to open the, up the mecca of craft brew, San Diego. <laughs> there's a there's <laughs> right. a brewery too that I went to on El Cajon Boulevard. And I went there with um, Travis uh, and my sister, and I forget the name of it, but it's like some tiny little brewery, and that place was like super dope too. All these like tiny mm-hmm. little brewery, breweries are just popping up all over the place. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot it's in awesome. North Park. Awesome, I love it. <laughs> what a time yeah, to be alive, boys! Yeah, right. What a time <laughs> to be alive. And in Southern, Southern California, California. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, right on. So uh, you know we're gonna keep drinking these, uh, but let's go ahead and uh, do a little rating before we uh, move on. Um, we'll start with our guest, Mark. Uh, out of five points, uh, what would you what would you rate this guy? Out of five, huh? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's it's a good beer. It's not my favorite from Ballast Point, and <coughs> the pineapple smells really good, even when you pour it. And it smells it smells delicious. But just as I'm drinking it, it's and I get that like pineapple flavor. I'm not a big fan. Um, mm-hmm. I'll probably give it like a three point five, maybe. It's it's cool. decent. It's solid, but it's it's not my favorite. I got you. Let's go to our uh, non IPA expert, Alec. Uh, what do you think about this guy, dude? Now, now you guys have me like questioning my thoughts. Here. <laughs> I'm like, what am I missing? What? A, you, everyone's like, eh, it's not that great. I'm like, what am I missing? I'm yeah, like we, sitting here looking at it, trying to take a sip real palettes, quick. Let me. <laughs> our palate. Yeah, are I know, but now I'm just now I now I know what Drew felt like the other day. Where he's like, I just don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> that's good. It brings the differences, you know. Yeah. Tell us your honest opinions. Yeah, no, um, I actually like, it, like it. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, do, do it's not going to be the dude. Zumbar. <laughs> it's not going to be the Zumbar stout that we had because I think that's going to hold. It's re- going to reign supreme for me for a while. But I actually, pr- like, I like this beer. Um, like I said, the uh, I don't normally like the bitterness of IPAs. This one's pretty mellow in bitterness. And then that kind of, like, for me, there's that strong citrus aftertaste and that pineapple-y flavor as well as smell. Like Mark said, it smells delicious. It smells delicious. It looks nice. It has good head. And then it it kind of tones down the bitterness for me. And I'm actually going to give this... Hold your butts, everybody. I'm going to give this... Hand, hang on, on to your hand butts, all right? Are you ready? <laughs> Are you, what, Mark, what did you rate it? What did you rate it, Mark? 3.5. Yeah, you rated it 3.5. And you're an IPA liker person, right? Yeah. I'm an IPA disliker person. And I'm going to give this a 3.5. Seven five. Dude. Oh. Oh. Doing it. Oh. I'm breaking the conditioning. It. I'm breaking the. He conditioning. likes it better than a guy that likes IPAs. <laughs> right, damn. I do. Well, so uh, if you don't like be... IPAs, this may be for you. 
<laughs> well, that's going to be hard to follow, Rolando, but uh, what are you going to rate this guy? All right. Well, I mean, you guys know my opinions already on it. Um, I think part of the reason why I don't like it and why I think it detracts from the Sculpin is that the citrus is kind of mellowing out the hops. Um, and so you're losing a bit of the fresh bitter bitterness of the hops, and like the, kind of like the the freshness you get from taking a sip of an IPA. And so I feel like the grapefruit sculpin doesn't do that, but this one does. And so I'm going to have to rate it lower. I'm going to give it maybe like a 3.25. I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I agree with uh, most of what you guys are saying. Um, but at the end of the day, I kind of, I like the citrusy of it. Um, I like when I drink it, I take like a big, like, uh, sniff through my nose and then gulp it down. I get that nice citrus, um, super easy to drink. Um, and the way you guys described it before, super good. I think the original Sculpin for me is better. Um, I would rate the original Sculpin probably like a 4.25. It's just a classic, good, Mm -hmm. drinkable IPA. Uh, this is, it's not quite as good, but it's, it's different, um, I, you know, I kind of want to break up like my IPA drinking. So like I'll have a sculpt in one week and then I'll have like something flavored like this, you know, the next week. So kind of breaking it up. I like it for that. Um, so I'm going to rate it a four, even four for me. Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> I think this one's uh, better as well than uh, the other IPA we've had on here. The mission. The mission is is pretty intense. Uh, Mark, if you've the not double had that. Fucking I like the mission better than <laughs> <Yeah>. this one. <laughs> the mission from... <clears throat> Uh, the Mission Brewing, Mission uh, Brewery, brewery uh, Double, double IPA. IPA. Yeah. I think yeah. I've had that. I enjoyed that one. Mm-hmm. I like no, Mission no, guys, it's the right. double fucking Oh, yeah, IPA. double fucking IPA. <laughs> double fucking IPA. Please no. get it right. Right. <laughs> See. Consistency. Well, cool. <laughs> cool, cool. Good stuff, guys. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, continue to drink this, uh, whether you like it or whether you're not. That's uh, what we got today. Um, and let's Deal go ahead it. and uh, start, uh, before we get into anime, let's start uh, drilling Mark. Let's see, uh, you know, what he's all about, what he's got. Oh, so, yeah, uh, dude. <laughs> this is... Uh, <laughs> this, we kind of... Yeah, Mark was there for that. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was the best moment of Mark AX. Mark was there for that. <laughs> best moment of AX for Probably. Dude, that was that was <laughs> edgy, edgy, edgy. Dude, that was so funny. That was great. So, uh, Mark, we talked a little bit about your beer preferences. Uh, let's talk about uh, the other half of this show, which is anime. What are what are some of your anime preferences? How did you get into anime? What do you like? What do you dislike? You know, just just go. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, how did I get into anime? Uh, honestly, the first like memory I have of watching anime was watching Dragon Ball Z. You're gonna say that? Well, yeah. Well, even before <laughs> yep, yep. I was in middle school, I when I was in like elementary, probably like third grade or something, I went to a friend's house. He was watching Dragon Ball Z. It was in Spanish, <laughs> and I was like, "What is this? This is, this is awesome! Like, all I've been watching is Batman and like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and what is Dude, these guys Batman fighting? Was dope and Spider-Man, back then, and Spider-Man, yeah. And so, and then you know, I'm, I met Rolando in middle school, and then we just kind of like watched anime like randomly, and then you know, watched all the old ones. But I, I guess, I guess, my favorite is probably Samurai Samurai Shampoo is probably one of my favorites. Uh, I just love the art style, the action. Even the score is awesome. New Jabe's, dude. Dude, New Job is yeah. my man. New um, Jabe is the best. New Jabe, excuse me. Uh, and Steins Gate. Oh, yeah, I know uh, Rolando and Alec are big fans of that mm-hmm. as well. Um, great. Drew isn't. What? I'm just kidding. No, I like that. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm, I'm out of here. You can't have a good dog's day. Like, where, where is Drew now? <laughs> I'm going to drive oh, down oh, there and I'm going to your ass. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? My Yuri. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> all right. And then I know uh, least favorite. Uh, this was a hard one. Uh, there's a lot of anime that I'm, I haven't been like a big fan of, it, but I don't like necessarily dislike them. Uh, so I had to kind of do some research. Uh, but I found one that I, I did not like, even though I watched the whole way through. It's True Tears. I don't know if you guys have ever watched it. Really? I did no, not like it. I did it. not like True Tears. It was it was it had a decent story, but I didn't like it because of the main character. He just bugged oh. me and the fact that he didn't go with the girl that I wanted him to, which I forget her name. <laughs> just <laughs> Wait, are you talking about Chicken Girl? Mark didn't yes. get what he wanted. <laughs> See, that's that's why we have different experiences with that show because yes, I really dude. like True Tears. 
And really? yes, I really like True Tears, and I feel like the way it went was the way it should have gone. So Dude, it's, it's actually totally interesting to know that you didn't <laughs> like it, and because you didn't go with Chicken Girl. Yeah, that's exactly why I felt See, for some her, t- man. I, I, sometimes you guys, her. you just gotta fight, fight over your girl, and that's and that's what's gonna determine a good or bad show for you. Is, yeah. is in, the girl? In case people don't know, aren't familiar with True Tears, this is a very early PA work show. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah, that's um, pretty old. And so a lot of people thought that Glass Slip was going to be a spiritual successor to True Tears because <laughs> oh of like the chickens and like it just seemed to have like a similar, <laughs> um, it seemed to have a similar <laughs> premise starting. I starting forgot about it. the chickens in Glass Slip, dude. Why did you bring it back? <laughs> Fuck but me. Glass Slip is God. like fucking trash. Why are we bringing this back? Well, Mark <laughs> mentioned the, the, the chicken least favorite yeah. True Tears. And it's kind dude, of funny all, because all they're, anime, I've never they're kind of related. Tears. So, dude, she was so weird. All she anime so comes nice, back man. to Glass Slip, dude. It all comes <laughs> all back. It's the back. origin of anime. <laughs> <laughs> P- oh works. my god! Um, yeah, I mean, you yeah, you what, keep being you. Yeah, you, was there, you put out your, <laughs> your you shitty anime, works. and then your every once in a while gems. Yeah, exactly. Every few years they come out with one and people are like, this is exactly what we wanted from PA Works. And then, they, and then the rest yeah. is just And then they crap. just like poop it out. <laughs> like, all right, well. And then, and then Glass Slip. Yeah, here's, yeah. here's another show. Glass Slip. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know yet. So is there anything else that you want to I mean, <laughs> video games, I guess, was another thing that it, um, was Well, I was going to ask you, um, kind of staying on the anime topic, are sure, you sure. watching anything uh, in particular, uh, in particular uh, this season? Yeah, I am actually. So there's a couple that... I'm watching that I don't think you guys are. Uh, there's like one what? that's called Recreators. That's from, I think, started last season. It's a 22-episode series. It's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's kind of one of your typical action-packed anime. It, it almost reminds me of, like, like with a Fate kind of series mm-hmm. mixed with um, Gate. So there's these characters that are from... Uh, basically all kind of different anime, video games, light novel series that have come to real like uh, real oh, life. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, so it's cool. Yeah. So they're like in real life and there's like one character who is basically trying to destroy the world because her and her creator are had basically been forgotten. So she's trying to destroy the world and there's like two sides of the coin. Mm. There's like the good versus evil, obviously. I mean, like most an- a- action anime, there's people who are trying to save the world and people who are trying to destroy it. Right. But it's cool. Why is there never neutral versus neutral? Come on. Because then it wouldn't be neutral. (laughs) Then they wouldn't, yeah. No, it would be, (laughs) I'm more neutral than you. I'm more neutral than you. I'm more neutral. I'm more neutral than you. <laughs> no, I'm the most neutral. Well, you have like chaotic neutral and stuff. Wouldn't that like... just mean that they're both like opposites? They're just radicals? If they're both more <clears throat> no, neutral just, than I'm the neutral. Other. No, I'm neutral. Then they just like walk away and then the show. Over. <laughs> the end. It's like choosing a neutral sounds, ending sounds in, uh, in Shin Megami Tensei. Right? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. Just nobody dies. Nobody lives either. <laughs> Um, so there's, so there's that one right now. It's at, uh, episode 16, I think. Um, mm-hmm. it's got some pretty cool characters in it. I definitely think it's uh, worth checking out. Uh, I think there's another one that I don't think you guys have on here, which is, uh, Suradura Children. Oh, I'm watching that. Oh, you are? Sundere oh, okay. Children. It's weird. Sundere Children. It's just it's nothing w- but like short <laughs> romance stories. It's weird, kind of but like, about it, Sundere it's kind of got children. like a, you know, <laughs> weird charm to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got a lot of really cliche kind of romantic stories but they're kind of funny and enjoyable yeah. in a sense it's the, better that so it's you like sundries a lot yeah definitely yeah i, I agree if it was an See, entire full does. drawn out series i don't it think i would boring. enjoy it yeah yeah um so that's a good one if, and i think that's pretty much it's it. not sundry children alex sundry children. <laughs> 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 i just like i just liked that i said oh you like sundry children and then he goes yeah exactly <laughs> it was like, yeah, the yeah. timing was perfect yeah, dude. Oh, dude. if I, there was an anime with God just like. sundry ch- children <laughs> No, <laughs> let's, he wouldn't let's watch not go. Let's, let's move on. I think they would all just ignore each other and just. I like, mean, I might like it. <laughs> yeah, no, Drew would like it as long as they were punching. Drew him. likes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Just nothing but Nichan. <laughs> He's the Baka Nichan. Oh 
Mm. <laughs> well, uh, if you're uh, if you're watching any of the ones that uh, we're watching as well, we'll we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. We got quite a few that we're gonna go through, but uh, sure. moving on a little bit. Um, I know we ask everybody who's on the show kind of like their video game interest. Uh, you care to uh, enlighten us on uh, that facet of your life? Sure. Uh, video games. Zelda. And, yeah, exactly. I was gonna say. I mean, <laughs> how, how can I not mention Zelda? I know Alec and I share the same kind of passion for Zelda. Is Ocarina of Time is my all-time favorite game. I know it's like a lot of people's answers, but that was one of the games where I actually 100% finished it. The very like one of like the very first games that I finished completely and felt satisfaction from finishing a game. You know, you did mm-hmm. everything in the game. Yeah, like I got everything. And you were like, I don't feel like I wasted time getting all of these things. Yeah, it was so yeah. just satisfying and just yeah, it's a, it's a great game. Um, but I mean, we, we play online, we've been playing online for a while. We play league and overwatch and mainly like, I guess, story games, even though I don't have time for them, like first person games, so like the Witcher three was a great game. Fallout. I played a lot. Um, I only played like 20 hours of fallout four just because I picked it up and like, I didn't have time to keep playing. So I just kind of forgot about it. <laughs> um, but happens. Yeah, exactly. It happens. Yeah. Um, Titanfall 2, I, I know I told you guys I got this storyline was really good for the campaign. Um, online is kind of meh. That's the really? issue. Yeah. I can't justify buying that game for $60 knowing I'm going to play like a short campaign and then the online is going to be meh, just like the first game. Like, it's cool. Like, uh, it's cool, yeah, but it, it's it's, it's, ex, it's exact like rehash of the first game. I mean, there's oh, a couple man. of new Titans, mm. but I mean, it's it's fun. I got it on sale as well. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, all right. Yeah, all right. I got it on sale for like then it's worth 25 it. bucks. All right. so. That's not that's not bad. Cool. All right, yeah. I'd pay twenty five for it. So yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, do you that's uh, do uh, you guys have any questions uh, for Mark, uh, Alec, or Rolando? I'll, I guess I'll open up for uh, Alec. Uh, do you want to ask this guy anything? Um. Well, how I I mean, you say you're a Zelda fan. <laughs> so how do you rank <laughs> oh, the, the to- yeah? How do you rank the the Zelda games that you've played? Like, what what's your order? Because I know some, you know, other Zelda fans like myself and others are probably like, huh, I wonder what he ranks. You know, Ocarina of Time is obviously number one, but where do you put the others? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Breath of the Wild is really good. It was surprisingly really, really amazing. Uh, the, the art in it was great. The story was pretty good. I mean, the, the final boss was a little lackluster. And I know people have been raving that it's probably like the best Zelda game since Ocarina of Time, but... I don't necessarily agree. I think it, it, it lacked in a lot of areas, especially without having like real dungeons. I mean, the shrines are mm-hmm. cool, but there should have been a lot of more like heavy substance to it. Should have been more to it, I think. Uh, being able to climb was awesome and jump. It was cool. <laughs> uh, but I'd, I'd say, I mean, Breath of the Wild is probably like at least in like top three, uh, just because it, it was a really good game. Um, and I think the classic SNES version uh, just... Legend of Zelda was probably number two for me. That was another game that I was one of the first ones that I picked up like a long time ago. So that's got a lot of nostalgia for me. Um, and then Majora's Mask, probably number four, I'd have to say. It's a good game as well. Took me forever to beat that. Don't know why. <laughs> you know, one of our, it's, one of our friends in middle school like, actually offered to it. help me beat it. You remember Wait, who? Sylvia? Really? Yeah surprisingly yeah so this girl that i never would have expected to play video games was like oh dude i'll help you beat the game i was like what that's <laughs> wait you played <laughs> no <laughs> no i like, no. No, no, i want to beat it <laughs> that's pretty much what i told her it's like wait you've beaten it i've got to beat it now I was like oh, shit, fuck what? you don't even yeah. play video games you I, can't beat me <laughs> i mean i i would not have guessed if you didn't say it yeah it would, it's random super random yeah. but so it's a good game i, I like majora's mask iconic i guess too a lot of people probably rank that higher but it's my number one cool Mm. screw you yeah (laughs) well uh, (laughs) majora's majora's mask my number one and then uh wind waker and ocarina of tie uh ocarina of time tie for number two for me yeah wind waker is definitely top five you know number five wind waker is awesome i i think you were telling me to pick it up because it was on sale and i bought it and i was like i don't know it just the art style never really appeared to me that much but after playing the Mm -hmm. game it was really cool i really enjoyed it it is funny, yeah. yeah. It's the, a funny game. The like facial the expressions on the characters yeah. was like a new element oh, yeah. to Zelda. Yeah, 
to the Zelda series. Because it's that cartoony Zelda yeah. or cartoony drawing style. And so his face, when stuff happens, he's like, <gasps> it's, like great. Yeah. it's super expressive. It's just as expressive. good as like the Breath of the Wild expressions that are right now. Mm-hmm. Like it, yeah. it was amazing. And for its time, that's pretty progressive. Well, what's, you know? what's crazy, like you guys are mentioning like the expressions and things like that. Um, it's, he doesn't talk like throughout the entire game all, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And for him to be as expressive as he is and to like know his emotions and things like that all through like facial expressions and grunts is pretty impressive. So that's what I, I, I really enjoy Wind Waker as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the music, the soundtrack for Wind Waker is one of my favorite soundtracks of all of them. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing the like when you guys, you're on the boat uh, that music you're like i'm on a fucking adventure this is dope like <laughs> man it gets me going anyway so gets, so you guys uh hard. you guys know uh rush and liz uh they're married um some of our good mm-hmm. friends um we'll have rush on here eventually but um their wedding procession was the music from the intro, like the intro credits before you press start or whatever. That was their uh-huh. like walk up to their wedding. Wait, for, music uh, was, for what game? Was from the Wind Waker. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, everyone calls it like those that bat that Scottish bagpipe song. Yeah. and they're like, oh, this is so pretty. And like half the like the older people at the wedding didn't know what it was, and so it's like, <laughs> but the friends are like, like be- I know this. <laughs> this sounds yeah, familiar. So, so, so that's definitely, great. That's definitely awesome. cool. Before before we move on. Um, Mark, I want to ask you, what is your least favorite game? Least favorite game? Least, like mm-hmm. what, like you can say you hate it or like whatever, like what do you least like? Oh man, that's tough. Oh, there's too much to choose from, huh? No, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad idea. I guess I didn't really think about that. Least favorite video game? Yeah, man. Hmm. I'm throwing you a curveball. They're all good. I love video games, and I appreciate <laughs> all the hard work that people put into them. <laughs> you weren't saying that about that anime. <laughs> <laughs> tore, it, tore that shit down. Um, yeah, you said, fuck this shit and all their effort. <laughs> no, you fuck know what? shit I'm out. I have played a lot of shitty video games, because uh, when I was growing up, I had a family friend who worked for PlayStation in Santa Monica, and they would send me video That's games sweet. all the time, like for free. Oh, nice. And I would play a bunch of shitty video games. Because <laughs> it was like, like third party They're games like, that they would here. send me, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, it's got a cool cover art. It's free, like, might as well. Well, this is absolute trash. I don't and know. And then what I'm you doing. realize that the reason they're giving it to you is because they didn't want to keep it in their. Like, I had a hole drilled through the case so they couldn't resell it. Yeah, uh, that, they were like, they just get rid of these. You, the yeah, you, sh- they didn't really think about the fact that they're CD cases, so yeah. you could just get a new CD case <laughs> and put all this stuff into it. <laughs> Um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I can think of like a least favorite video game off the top of my head. I mean, I haven't played that many. Like, I guess I've been really like choicey, choosy, I should say, in the choicey. video game. Cho- choicey. Choosy, choosy in the video games that I've played recently. Choicey. Just because I don't have a lot of time to play a lot of video games. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a hard one. Any, well, well, and what's we the first come back to you. that comes to mind? The first video game that comes to mind that, that you were like, meh. Uh, it was a monster <laughs> fighting game. A monster for, for fighting For the PS2, game. yeah. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that system had a huge backlog of random games. Random, that was probably the first yeah, one. Yeah. I can't even remember mm-hmm. what it was called. It's like hollywood monster fighters or something i don't know that's a fucking random ass name <laughs> yeah it was game. weird but uh, i played it with some cousins and i was like well this is this is really terrible <laughs> you want to know what monster fighter game i actually played on the ps2 that i thought was actually really good the fucking godzilla game dude it's a godzilla game <laughs> There is a Godzilla though. game, and it looks like it would be awful, but for whatever reason, it is so much fun. Because you get to play as all the different monsters, shoot lasers out of, like, the, the three game. monsters' head. And Godzilla does shit, and you can, like, suplex people. I don't know. It's fucking op- awesome, dude. <laughs> I think <laughs> I've played dope. that game. I, I know what you're talking about. All right. Yeah, and it's fun, right? <laughs> it's actually surprisingly <laughs> I fun. Don't, I don't remember... I don't remember. Um, yeah, he doesn't remember a lot of I things. I just remember it's like all the drugs. I just remember like <laughs> <laughs> I just remember like suplexing people as Mecha Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, dude. Anyway. That was that was like one of my favorite things to do in that game. But <laughs> anyways, yeah. all right, uh, does uh, you guys have any other uh, questions for Mark uh, nope. before we move into the uh, anime topics? Nah, nah, nah. You guys good? Cure? Cool. Nah. 
Well, uh, thanks uh, thanks again for joining us, Mark. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and uh, right, put talk down. about some anime. Let me uh, do I just sign let's off. Put him down. <laughs> <laughs> just, all right, go away now. Fuck we out. don't want you. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to sleep, chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Going to Let's, sleep uh, we got right. we got quite a few that everybody's watching. We're not going to go like mm-hmm. super in depth. I don't think for any of them yet. There we're still too early in the season. I think to <clears> kind of <throat> like pick ones that we're going to stick with. But uh, we'll talk about you know kind of you know some of them that we've been watching things like that. Why don't we get a soccer quest out of the way just because you yeah. know it's one that we're continuing from the old season. Um, so we can kind of talk about what's going on with that. Um, Rolando, do you want to start uh, with Soccer Quest? Uh, sure. Yeah, this episode I enjoyed quite a bit. It was kind of a a weird flashback thing. We learn about um, Ushi Matsu or whatever, like his his name is the the tourism mm. board director guy mm-hmm. and crazy guy. His uh, meat. His, his name's meat. Yeah, his name is meat <laughs> in yeah. the band. Beef. But he has a Beef. he had a band <laughs> with. Ririko's grandmother and the inventor yep. dude, and it's just like wait, okay. So before what? before we go on from that, like <laughs> like Chitose was like hot when dance. she was younger, right? She looked like. Am I wrong there? She looked like Ririko. Like you can see, um, like the yeah. the similarities in like you're like, oh wow, yeah, she has yeah, a that's her granddaughter. Face. Like it's this very yeah, similar features. Yeah. I, mean, I thought that too, and that's what I was like glad they like kind of kept the consistency of it. It's like she did age, like obviously that's like what's gonna happen. But when she was young, like okay, okay, hand emoji, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what do it, you um, say about anyway. her now? The, huh? And they all had names. Oh yeah, they all had names. Her name, or the the tourism guy's Olive. name was Beef Olive, and then the other guy was Poison. Yeah, rocker names, yeah, dude. Yeah. Olive, Beef, and Poison. Oh hell yeah! Heavy I can metal get behind band. that. <laughs> Yeah, oh, was it meat? Was it meat or beef? Was I think meat. you're right. I think it was, it was beef. beef. It was beef. Because I remember seeing on the side of his guitar case, it was like beef. I was yeah, like, what yeah. the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> my name's beef. And then she was like talking to him, and he's like, she's like, well, beef, blah blah blah. I'm like, oh my god, his name is beef. What the? Fuck? It's also kind of <laughs> weird because it kind of seemed like there could have been like a budding romance between them, except for the whole band thing. Like, oh, for sure. In the way. Oh, for sure. And so that's kind of crazy to think that Ruriko might not even exist. Had things. T- that's you know, what gone differently. Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk she about too. How team. awkward was the scene between uh her Chitose and his wife when they're oh, in the yeah. hospital? And I'm think and I'm thinking the whole time I'm like <laughs> Like they could have been banging when they were younger. Yeah, like, that was probably <laughs> a, that was probably a thing. Like, and she's like, "Come to Tokyo with me, so we can pursue this." Like, how awkward was that situation? It's, weird. Like, <laughs> it's been years. They forgot. He's like, "Oh, let's oh let's eat some manju to like forget about this or something." <laughs> like, oh, that scene why was why fucking... did you marry him? Oh, you know, like yeah, why did yeah. why did you form a band with him? He's just because I thought it was a then, cool rocker. He's got, they he both have like these cool smug ass looks on their face. Because his name is Beef. <laughs> his name is Beef. I saw his penis before his you did. Beef. He's got big beef. <laughs> He's got huge beef. <laughs> Chitosa is just like, I saw his beef before you saw his beef. And I had she's a like, taste. yeah, well, I got to I keep his beef. I had a taste. I tasted I tasted the beef before you tasted the beef. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, well, I tasted the oh, beef uh, for the past forty years. <laughs> oh God! Jeez. By the way, guys, I don't, I don't know if you're feeling it or not, but this beer is also seven point zero percent. So just yeah, I'm uh, feeling it. <laughs> l- 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 little FYI, there, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little dude. <laughs> a little I, yeah, turned I'm, up. I'm. I had been. I had fucking second. beer mosas before this. So <laughs> nice. Beer mosas. <laughs> yes. Beer mosas. What is a beer mosa? Okay, you got orange juice. Right, and then I assumed, like a, kind of a very light beer, like a <laughs> like a dry Belgian or a lager, and then could we use the Weihen Stefaner? <laughs> I mean, that might be not the Hef. It might work. Yeah, it's it's too good though. You, you shouldn't drink that. Yeah, with don't anything. mix that. Um, don't the mix place that. the place I went to, <clears throat> they add um, uh, creme de peche, which is like a peach cream mm, liqueur ish thing mm-hmm. and um a bit of lavender simple syrup huh. it was good Interesting. yeah it was good it does sound good you can you can uh, there's like other variations like you can have like that's fancy as um, fuck. Right? you can you can instead of having <laughs> the 
creme de peche <laughs> or whatever, you can just like, you know, throw like a dash of bitters in there oh. and, and, you know, like garnish with like mint or basil or something like that. Sounds like a solid breakfast. It's, mm. it was, yeah, it, it was great brunch. Drink. <laughs> it was a great drink for brunch. <laughs> nice. Sounds good with anyway, uh, some. Uh, back uh, to. Uh, I forget. <laughs> Never mind. Ignore me. <laughs> no, no. Back to soccer request. Um, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. forget where we were. We were talking about hot Chitose. You were talking about how you hot thought Chitose. Um, Chitose was hot and that you want to ban him. Hand, yeah. at, the A-OK current age, emoji. Yeah. at the current age. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no, <laughs> the no, no, no current no, no. age. Current yeah, age. yeah. At grandma age. 50, 50, 50 years ago, Chitose. <laughs> no, you're into you're Chitose. into gilf you're into gilf Chitose. Oh, yeah. oh, Obacha. Cal- Cal- Obacha. Cal- <laughs> Obacha. You guys got yes. me. You guys got me. Obacha Daisuke. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, at least right. at least Chitose can go downstairs, right? Uh, yeah, I true. thought you were gonna say something. <laughs> <completely> <laughs> <different>. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right, let's move on. Continue, continue and that before, is done. <laughs> before we go into somewhere we don't oh, want okay. to. All right. Oh my so, God. soccer request. Flashback. I think Rolando was talking about it. I don't know where to go. Yeah, with this it was right now. A, it was a good episode. I enjoyed all the backstory. It was basically they showed the whole festival that he kind of fucked up and why he was trying to hide <laughs> the shrine that was in the lake. I mean, it's pretty simple. I thought that Ririko got more character development in terms of stuff like her friend, her Spanish friend, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So. It mm-hmm. was overall uh, And the enjoyable. grandma kind of got some too. Yeah. Because she was like you should go out and do the things you want to now. Mm-hmm, exactly. Even though before she yeah, was don't like waste I never your thought youth. of it. Yeah. yeah. Because she her, her it. opinion seems to have changed mm-hmm. like from what we thought it was before. We're actually getting like good character development in the show which is like something that PA works either you have glass lip or you have something like this where you have like <laughs> good character development everyone you know kind of grows and things like that. So and I'm, I'm, I'm also going to be honest, like, uh, I didn't expect that. this level of character development from the sh- a show, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. like this, like like yeah. soccer quest. I was kind of thinking, eh, you know, it'll be kind of just blah, you know, and, but it's been really yeah. good. You've yeah. gotten it all the, on all the characters, even old man Jenkins and old lady Chutose. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I enjoyed it. Good show overall. Mark, are you are you watching it at all or? I'm not actually. Uh, okay. Since I'm watching the other show, Recreators, that's another continuation 22 episode series that it's taking up. I got you. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick it up. We'll see. Maybe once it's over. Maybe he'll pick up Glass Slip. It's kind of, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like maybe he'll like it's... Maybe he'll like Glass Slip because he didn't like True Tears. Maybe. Ooh. No. <laughs> I started I started Glass Slip a long time ago and I, I never finished it. I was like, yeah, this is, this is, yeah, no. Good. Good job. This is don't, not don't good. This is not good. At <laughs> all. I never started it. I never anyway. started it. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Uh, I mean, you can. <laughs> you can if you want, but no, I'm <laughs> but okay. Probably don't. Uh, I'm okay. Let's uh, <laughs> let's move on. Let's talk about uh, new game. Um, I think all of us are watching that. Mark, are you watching new game or? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So cute girls making anime or not anime. Cute girls <laughs> making video Baco, games. Dude. Um, <laughs> 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 so we got uh we got uh episode two um of uh, the second season basically they're having the main conflict basically comes up and they're you know the the girls are making this new game they don't have a like a real direction as to where it's going and they're having this contest saying hey all you artists you know submit what they give them like a general guideline it's kind of like a, it reminds me of like a kirby game they're like absorbing <laughs> animals and dungeon things powers and then fighting them and things like that and then gaining their powers by absorbing them by killing them or whatever it is so kind of like a kirby sort of deal a similar game Um, would be uh uh god eater yeah Mm -hmm. never played that so um they don't have like they don't know if they want to set it in a modern setting they don't know if they want to set it in like a fantasy setting they're just like use your creative direction and go 
And so they have like the first round of cuts and everybody's like, your things are shit. Like uh, Ko, who is like the main uh, art director and things like that. Her All her stuff gets denied and they're like, this is just what you do all the time. This looks exactly like fairies one and two. Like they were expecting come up more with something her. new. Exactly. <clears throat> like you have to, and, and the, the director is like, you know, broaden your senses. Like you can't just be doing the same thing over and over. You need to develop yourself as an artist and the only way you're going to do that is pushing yourself to develop, you know, different styles and things like that. And she takes that really hard and takes it out on Alba, who is so fucking pure. Just like, please protect her. Like, don't bully. Like, all these things. She, like, screams at her. She's like, I just got all my shit rejected. Like, and you're going to come to me for help? And, like, all this stuff. It was just, it was heartbreaking. Uh, I don't know what you guys felt about it. I mean, I saw it coming. I was like, yeah, she's going to snap at her. Uh, I mean, Alba was like, oh, you know, she's a nice person. She'll be okay with it. But, like, let's all Mm -hmm. be real here. She probably should have at least given her a day (laughs) before asking for help. (laughs) She asked, like, later that same day. Like, have a little... No offense to Alba, have a little tact (laughs) and be like, let me wait a day after your rejection to ask you for help. Maybe now's not a good time. (laughs) Exactly. And she's like, let me go ask. It's like, well, how about you suffer through it for now and you ask tomorrow? Like, but obviously they had that thing so she could... So the the other girl could uh, feel bad about it. Talk to the girl, and she's like, "I know you'll make the right decision." And then he helps. She helps her out, and mm. blah blah blah. But whatever. Anyways, um, I, that, one thing I wanted I to point out. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to point out too is actually a character that I don't really like very much. Uh, Yoon, the uh, blonde haired uh, gothic Lolita kind of character. Really, she you had like, like some her? good development this time. No, I think she's very bland. Um, and boring. I think all the other girls bring a better dynamic than what she does. That she is right. I'm not saying him. that she's bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all, all the girls in the show are good. <laughs> all the <laughs> all all the girls <laughs> all the girls in this show that. are good, except for Umiko because Umiko is retarded and all she does is play airsoft and be boring. But that's beside the point. So <laughs> Yoon is no, like no, Yoon think... is like she's good, but she doesn't. <laughs> what? I I I think you're mistaking the worst one with Alba's friend. No, I love her. Oh, I love I her. Wait, hate really? Her. Oh yeah, Did you... I fucking hate oh, her. Oh, she's annoying. she's so she's so fucking precious. So like, annoying. <laughs> no, no, no. I I love her. I think she's I love fucking her. hilarious. I saw like one minute I and too. I was like, oh god. <laughs> I do too. I, Alec, I agree with you. I think she is fucking I think hilarious. She's funny. Dude, she's, she's anyway. Little, how, when she was doing the testing, she's like, I'm trying to get that upscurt. I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, I thought that was hilarious. I, that was no, her main I think, goal I think to try and get so. an upskirt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so Yoon, you know, she has this good character development where basically it's like, uh, you know, hey, I don't really try that hard, but, like, all the stuff that you guys as a team are doing, it's kind of, like, motivating me to do better, and even though maybe I won't get, like, a good outcome like you guys, I do want to try harder and stuff like that, so I think that was good. Um, And then, in the end, kind of moving on, because we got a lot of shows to talk about, and we're kind of getting off topic a lot. Um, Basically, Ko and Alba, you know, come together and make this design for the, uh, the um, the second cutoffs. And come up with a good idea, and they're working together to kind of, you know, you know, Alba is gonna m- not necessarily be like the lead mm. designer or anything like that. They're co, they're co, uh, but her, designers. yeah, exactly. So it's it's gonna be kind of based off their design, which is cute and cool, and should be make for a fun game. So I think the uh, the season's heading in in a good direction. Yeah, this second episode is really good, and they were they did a very good job of adapting it, and that's what I was worried about after the first episode. So. Mm-hmm. I give whatever yeah. studio I forgot what studio is doing this, but thumbs up. They did a very it's good job. Studio of uh, Doga Kobo. Yeah, very good Doga job of adapting the, the manga material. So cool, awesome. Studio Thirty Two. Cool. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, gamers. Um, I know, Alec, you're uh, watching this one. I'm watching this I one. I love Rolando, this show. You're watching. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know yes, uh, that was one of the shows that you said uh, you, you really like, Alec. So why don't you uh, go ahead and uh, talk about that? 
<clears throat> yeah, I like so I I watched the first episode. I wanted to watch it, and then I watched the first episode, and I really liked the first episode. So, um, I like I. <laughs> <laughs> what's so funny dude that's, that's so funny <laughs> nothing don't oh, worry okay, about no, no, okay. it so, okay, I see. I, <clears throat> so i watched the first episode and i like i i hadn't watched it until i heard you guys talking about it and how <clears throat> he doesn't join the um the club the gamers club or whatever and i thought that the I wasn't like frustrated by it or anything. I kind of his reasons made sense. He was kind of like, you don't play any of the games I play. You're super competitive. I'm bad. Like all those mm-hmm. reasons. And he's like, I don't want to join the club. Like he he didn't say he won't be friends with them. He's just not joining the club. Um, but going forward, like into the second episode, we're kind of getting this like new character coming in who used to be similar to the main character where he was like nerdy and played video games all the time and didn't really have friends. And he like tried to change himself so that he wouldn't be like considered nerdy. You know, he was like a cool guy Mm -hmm. or whatever. And he like attacks the, the main character saying like, Oh, you're this, you know, you, you don't know anything about me. And then he like insults him and then he insults the club. And then the dude basically tips him over the, the, the edge of a bridge. And I'm just cracking up the entire time because this little scrawny dude, like video gamer is like tipping this dude over the, over the fucking bridge. And he's supposed to be the cool guy. And the guy's sitting there like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Please don't kill me. I'm so sorry. Like the whole time. (laughs) Yeah. I thought that too. I was like, dude, this is really extreme. Like, (laughs) I'm like, Holy shit. Like he's like leaning him over, like he's, and he's on his tippy toes, and then he notices, and he's like, "Oh my god, oh, I'm so sorry." But I thought I, I I just found both episodes like they have really good like comedic moments. It's not following the typical you know the typical trope, and something I really like about this show is how every time they'll show like the the blonde girl I forget her name the, who started the club. Yeah. Karen. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, this is her fall is about to happen, you know, and it's saying like, oh, she's going to, you know, and they like put these little like commentary like next to the person that they're talking about. <laughs> and I just I, I that's like one of my favorite parts of the show, that little those little air bubbles commentaries that they put on the people when they're like something's happening. And but like all in all, I just think it's funny. I like all the characters and I, I think it's going to go a really good direction. It's just going to be an entertaining show. So, mm hmm. That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Don't tip yeah. people over. All, the, all the characters are, are, all the characters are super cool. Yeah. I, I like all their dynamics, and we're seeing like growth through everybody. I mean, we've only had a couple episodes, but yeah, you know, I like good them. development I like for everybody. Too. I think I think it'll end up being good. And then all the yeah. cameos are awesome, and we get the all the like that, so. we get that Persona Four Ultimax. Yeah, you get a bunch of references. Except he picked fucking Teddy. Pick po- fucking Teddy, like what the? Uh, well, what? the main the main <laughs> dude picked Narukami, dude. That's the most broken character in that game. I mean, they should have picked like Na- Naoto. They should have picked Naoto and like shadow- uh, Risa. And, you, you, you just want to shadow Naoto and then just insta kill you with fucking <laughs> Mahama or whatever shit like that combo. <laughs> that's the, that's the dumbest fucking fucking combo in that game. You can just insta give somebody with that. <laughs> At least they didn't pick Kanji. I don't, I don't want to get bashed around with like a fucking folding chair. Dude, like I'm not, Persona not, Five not Arena. Not you need to be. You're gonna play Ryuji. Ooh, ooh. Do the same thing, dude. <laughs> awesome. Let's uh, let's move on. Let's talk about uh, one show that uh, I'm actually not watching. Uh, In another world with my smartphone. Um, was it you, Rolando, who's watching that? Yeah, or? I don't know if anybody else is. No, I'm not watching. I've not no, seen I'm it. Not. Well, second episode, they do more stuff, guild stuff. There's a new character introduced. I'm still getting the vibes of that Rokujoma no um, <clears throat> Shinryaksha show. So, um, it's it is what it is. It like it's one of those shows that I'm just like, all right, I'll just watch this. Like you know. Um, it, when when I don't want something serious, um, it's entertaining at least. So it's not like oh man, I'm not watching it for the fucking story or anything. I'm just watching it to be like stuff happens and whatever. Not much to talk about it. Cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, I I get that right because on. uh, it's the same for me with Knights and Magic. Like I'm just watching it because it's like like the action is cool. The story is mildly interesting. 
I'll, I'm just I, I I watched the third episode just today and I was like, all right, this is cool. It seems like they're going to, you know, introduce some more fighting and there's like, you know, intrigue or whatever. And so it'll be cool. Like, it's just one of those shows where you can easily turn off, like click off your brain and just be like, I'm going to watch a show, watch cool fighting and have a pretty obvious story. And it'll be awesome. And I like it. <laughs> so it's it's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Now, the next uh, show that I want to talk about, um, and I highly recommend if anybody's not watching the show to pick it up, because I didn't pick it up originally, but the way you guys talked about it last week was like, oh yeah, I got to watch this. This sounds really too, This sounds really cool. And it was really cool. It's uh, Classroom of the Elite. Mm-hmm. Um, is everybody here watching that? Or Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm watching mm-hmm. it. I don't know about Alex. I think... I, yeah, I am. I think I like this, yeah. I think this show is going to be uh, one of the better shows this season. I think we should cover it. Too, um, it yeah. has a good. I, I definitely think so too. It's got. It's got. You know, the way you described it before, and this is what I was thinking the whole time I was watching the first couple episodes was um, the rom com snafu about the main characters, uh, the girl and the guy. Um, definitely, definitely remind me of. Uh, Eight Man and uh, whatever her name is, I oh uh, hear. Um, uh, Yukino, is that it? Uh, maybe I don't remember her name, but I hate her. But yeah, I kind of hate uh, Suzune <laughs> in, uh, in this uh, classroom of the elite as well. That's, um, that's interesting, but yeah, it's 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 super good. Like you know the whole the whole deal. Like they're in the worst class and they have to like build up their class. The uh, you know, uh, Suzune, you know, with her brother, you know, that conflict that's kind of going on. Uh, her brother is like the student council president at this like really ridiculous school. Um, and, you know, them trying to um, boost their class up and it's kind of failing now and different things like that. Uh, the thing that I didn't understand in the second episode is that if your entire class determines your rank and how well they do and different things like that. Why not just let the other people fail as opposed to like trying to tutor them? And they mentioned it a couple of times like, well, it's not worth my time. We'll just let them fail. But like if they're, it's going to better your class, I'll let these like idiots <laughs> yeah. who want to go out and buy like 80, 80K yen video games and things like that. Just let them fail so that then you can like boost your class up and not have to worry about them. I don't know if you, what you guys yeah. think about that. I thought the same thing, yeah. Mark, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, like I thought the same thing. I was wondering why even try to tutor these people who have basically no hope. Like you're just gonna drag your class down, even if they pass yeah. a, a class or pass a quiz, they're still gonna get low scores. Well, I mean, it was the midterms. It was a, yeah, no, it, it wasn't was just mid- the quiz. <laughs> I mean, midterms, like that's even worse. Like they barely pass midterms, but right. they're not gonna get high scores. And then compared to the other classes, who I'm assuming are doing way better, like. Why not just let these people fail? But then, like, they brought it up for a second, and then that idea just disappeared. And it was like, oh, well, let me tutor them. Yeah, I the, uh, uh, I agree. Right. I I thought, in my mind, the first thing was let those people fail out. Yeah. That way it's easier to bring the class as a whole up. But I think part of the discussion was they're trying to use it as a way to show that Suzuna's main flaw is that she doesn't care about anybody else Mm -hmm. and she's she's purposely isolating herself um, because she thinks that she's better than everybody I was gonna ask you what does the brother say to her it's like you're you're confusing isolation versus with independence that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was like really. It, and she hears that and she's like, Ew. yeah, it's um, <laughs> it, <laughs> it really is it's true to her character. Um, I actually mm-hmm. like her character. Um, because uh, like you said, you don't like her. I actually like her character because she's like she's cynical. Yeah, and kind of you know like outspoken, but and I know like she's flawed, and so mm-hmm. like I know that something should happen to help her develop and so i don't know i kind of like don't think, those types of characters i don't think it's like i don't like her i just think like she's very like stereotypical what she is so i do hope she has growth um one thing i wanted to talk about um with this anime in particular it kind of reminds me of uh and i think i said this last week it reminds me of like uh, the dangit rampa kind of vibe and she even uh reminds me of uh, kitty giddy from uh, dangit rampa i don't know if you yeah if i mean it or not uh, it, it's similar but like their characters are a bit different because 
Susan is kind mm-hmm. of more like I'm a bitch because I think this way, whereas like Kirigiri is kind of like um, I work I independently from everybody, everybody else, and like I have like this whole yeah. past and stuff behind. Like it's yeah. she, she's not mean because she thinks she's better than everyone else. That's the the main yeah, difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm also really curious to find out what's the deal um, with the main character. Yeah. I can't even begin to pronounce his name. Um, but Ayana like Koji? that thing yeah. with like, <laughs> yeah, the thing with like rigging his test scores and then like just doing enough to pass like on his scores in the midterms. He got like 65 and 70 to get into the school. He got all 50s. Like I'm, I'm super, super curious as to like why like he's average at everything. Yeah, even that like um, fight scene, that like really quick fight right. scene with the student council president. Like he like, clearly like he knows, knows how to fight. He knows how to fight. He knows how to you know mm-hmm. block people mm-hmm. and you know grapple. But he's saying that he's not good at sports and he's not athletic at all. But it's clearly <laughs> not true. Yeah, I guess. Well, and Suzune even mentioned it, it's like, how is it that you like you're so like athletically toned? Like she gets cut off, That's right, yeah. or mm-hmm. whatever when she's talking about. It, she's Not like, full. how are you like so athletically she's toned? Like, you don't do any body. clubs or any sports. <laughs> Look yeah. at your chiseled body. Look at that ch- those chiseled abs. <laughs> Why are you like this? I just want to. I just. I just want to touch those. I just wanna get it. <laughs> Well, then you see like uh, Kushida, uh, Kushida come up and just like rubbing her tits everywhere, and you're just no. Like, the All whole right, like, like <laughs> first part of that episode where there's just boobs bouncing everywhere, I'm just like, what the fuck yeah. is going on? Uh, we're second episode <laughs> fan service. All right, here we go. <laughs> there's just mm. boobs bouncing all over the place. I'm like, all right, I get it. Well, it's like he's talking. I forget if it's like the first episode or the second episode. I think it's the second episode. He's just like talking to her, and then like his oh, eyes just like looking at her down tits. her tits. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, those she just are, like didn't say anything. Like, those are big. Uh, oh yeah, look at your face." Right. <laughs> and like, pretty anyway, much everyone this... in that class has big boobs. So yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, um, this show's tight. Like, I I definitely think we should cover it. Um, it's got. A good dynamic um, going on. There's going to be a lot to talk about. I think this might end up being 24 episodes because it doesn't have like a 12 episode cap. Mm-hmm. So that might be nice to have uh, another one of those shows and it will give us enough time to like have that character development and things like that. So looking forward to this one for sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Moving on, uh, you guys are watching Restaurant in Another World. Um, what happened this week? Alec, you want to go? Uh, sure. Um, this week, uh, actually you go cause I forgot. <laughs> um, okay. I'm, I'm mixing um, up all the weeks cause right. I can't like keep them straight cause they're all kind of random. So it's Alex just... been taking too many drugs. <laughs> um, too many. Too many. So, so this week, um, we get the backstory of this princess and, uh, she starts using so like she originally goes through the That's door right. to the restaurant with her grandfather, who was like the first emperor of their kingdom. Mm-hmm. And um, she eats what's what her grandfather called clouds, but it's just a parfait. Um, and, you know, typical <laughs> like, oh, yeah, of course, like the girl's going to like sweets. And so she finds the mm-hmm. door again when she's older and um, goes through the through the door and like orders clouds. And then the. Um, restaurant guy's like, oh yeah, okay. Um, you're Wilhelm, Wilhelm's uh, granddaughter, aren't you? He's like, yeah, I got it. Gets her that stuff, and she eats the parfait, and she's amazed. And then there's also this um, dude that's selling pasta sauce in <laughs> the other world, and he's kind of like, oh yeah, he's like totally uh, yeah, just- like nobody knows what spices over there because they're like all like medieval and shit. And then like he's bringing all this like random shit. It's actually just trying to copy the recipes from that restaurant and like him and he brings his grandson in and they just order like fucking spaghetti. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, this is where everything has been coming from. Yeah. This is where I get all my ideas and recipes. And they're all it's like, all a shame. I'm just, a lie. Lie. <laughs> I'm just cheating. You know, I'm just yeah. trying to reproduce these, uh, these fucking recipes. Oh, by the way, your whole life is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a genius. I just copied that. <laughs> but it was so good, though. And he was yeah. like, oh, this is delicious. This is the best. I understand now. I'm mm-hmm. going to try to work towards making it better. Like, yeah. I was like, all right, that was well done. Like, even though that's stupid. It's just crazy. Show makes me him. so hungry. Because there, there's like all these <laughs> random backstories for these customers. Yeah. 
And like normally you wouldn't think like, oh man, like this is like this sounds like that sounds like a boring show. It's like you you watch it and you're like actually just um, engaged with mm. all the backstories and you're just like, all right, well, I mean, why am I? Why do I care about this fucking dude and his pasta sauce? Oh, it's because like he's really like he supplies vegetables to the chef and he wants to like grow his own business in the other world because he likes the taste. <clears throat> like, yeah. Which, by the way, he bought some weird vegetables and none of those are in the dishes that the restaurant is serving. But I don't, yeah. I don't know. That. I, I, I think like, like, he brings the vegetables <laughs> so that the chef can like taste them. And then he and then the the chef is like, all right, well, knowing these are the flavors that this door likes, I can make more palatable dishes for no, right. people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's entertaining, definitely. Yeah. yeah, all the all the random small stories is really entertaining. Surprisingly, like, surprisingly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's nice too because you don't have to like keep track of any like long story or anything. At least not at this point, you know. It's just kind of like you get a new story each week. So it's kind of cool, like having short stories each week. Right. So it's kind of relaxing. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I think cool. it, it, it might change. I mean, in the first episode, Possibly. we got that dragon lady who seemed like she was going to come again, back yeah. at some point. And then in yeah. the OP, there's another maid or like um, waitress lady who's there. So we'll right. see when, when she gets introduced. Yeah, the dragon lady who licks the pot was like, <laughs> no one messes with blah 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 with my and treasure like, well, what's, yeah what yeah with my treasure and it's like what so we'll, we'll, see, if, so. we'll see if no she one messes comes. with her etchy <laughs> etchy <laughs> <laughs> that was the best dude <laughs> awesome god well uh yeah that one that one sounds sounds pretty good um let's uh the last show that i think we're going to talk about is uh kake gururi um who else rolando i know you're watching yeah. it is anybody else watching this one seen the, the first two episodes i think there's three right there's four there's four I I've only seen the first catch two. up it's uh, good catch up oh. first one first two were good yeah i'm gonna definitely we're gonna we're gonna spoil you here mark i apologize right. um lewd gambling this this show's <laughs> This show's tight. Like, oh my god, I I love this show. I love the OP. I love the ending. Like, I love what's going on in this show. Um, not gonna go crazy into it. Uh, basically, this episode um, had the uh, main uh, protagonist Yumiko. She basically, you know, she we saw that she lost last week to uh, one of the student council uh, members, <clears throat> and now she's in this huge debt. Um, yeah, it's like a two point like, seven million like U.S. dollar three, debt. It's it's not a signi- It's not an insignificant amount. <laughs> not like two hundred bucks. Right. <laughs> it's it's like a lot of fucking money, and she's like not even worried about it either. Like uh, Ryota's like, uh, hey, like here's like a million yen. Like he, I'm, he like, gave, I know it's he not a lot. He gave but, back like, the money that he borrowed. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. And she's like, oh, no, they haven't even asked me to pay for it. Like, don't don't worry about it. She's like she's like such like a masochist. Like, I, I love it. Um, but anyway, um, we find out that uh, her as well as um, what's Mary? the blonde girl's name? Uh, Mary. Yeah. yeah um, her her and uh, Yumiko get teamed up in this like student council president or student council ploy to consolidate everyone's debt. So like people who have minor debt and things like that, like the student council pays it off and it's gone. Uh, but or, in return, they have to they play in this debts. sort of right. But no, yeah. before that, what I mean is like uh, they're they're consolidating all the small debts, and so basically they just owe the student council because the student council is paying off like their their minor debts that maybe I owe like ten thousand yen to this person and twenty thousand yen to this person. They're consolidating all the debt into one debt to the student council and then making them pay. And like you said, um, they can uh, they're in like teams of four and they're playing um, this card game that basically the winner um, will switch debt with like uh, the person who has the lowest debt and then it will be forgiven um, by the student council. So you don't have to be like a, uh, what is it like a mittens or a, uh, I forget the male version of it. Are you talking about uh, basically Mi- a class Mike pen. or, uh, or Pochi? You right, yeah. right. A dog, a, a dog pet, or a you know cat. What I mean? um, right. Um, yeah, th- but, um, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I was just gonna say, you know, we we see them starting playing this game, 
Um, we also met uh, Ikishima, this fucking crazy bitch who basically like fucking fingers herself in the bathroom with a gun. Um, <laughs> well, I gotta catch up now. with a gun. <laughs> I'm it was it right a, now. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was a pretty it was a pretty intense scene, but she's like a crazy character. Basically, bails Yumiko out from being sexually harassed because she is a uh, a house pet. And then uh, they go and then they start this game is where we get like a little bit of a cliffhanger. But uh, Mary and Yumiko are kind of They're working paired. together. They may be, may not be working together as we see. Um, the dude who sexually harassed Yumiko is like at their table and trying to make money off of their misfortune and things like that. But overall, Rolando, what do you, what do you think about this show? We kind of know what I think about it. I love this show. The show is like awesome. I think we should cover it. Um, but what, what do you kind of think about it? I mean, I really like this show. It's got an interesting art style and it's just got a lot of interesting stuff to it. There's like you get these random mechanics from random games that is turned into gambling. And then um, I didn't really understand the rules to Indian poker, but um, it, so it, it's like I looked it up. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked it up because I was confused as well. Um, it's basically what they described. You can't see your second card, and so it's all luck, like what you bet, but you use other people's cards that you can see to, to determine if if you may or may not have a good hand, but at the end of the day, it's like you're never going to know what your card is. What I thought it was at first was you could use everybody's card that you can see as like a pool, but you can't. It, it doesn't work like that. Are you just trying um, to match suits? Because that's what it seemed like. You can so if you if you if you have a pair, a pair is really strong. A pair is like regardless of um, suit, a pair is going to be the strongest, but that's going to be really rare. <clears throat> um, if you match a suit, so like diamond to diamond, you know, etc., that's also strong. And then the highest, uh, your high card is going to determine how strong your suit is. And if you have nothing that matches, you have a pig, which right. is worthless. So it's basically <laughs> like worthless. That. Um, same suit, which is more likely, and then a pair, which is like probably like a four of a kind in normal poker. So, like, right, exactly. Okay, got it. Um, what what I think is kind of interesting is how they're gonna have somebody's gonna cheat in this game. Every every game that they played, they've had people cheating. I'm curious as to how the cheating will work. Uh, they kind of mentioned that uh, Mary and Yumiko were perhaps cheating in some way, but they're not. Yeah, they tricked them. That's what, him. what we kind of got cliffhangered on. Um, so maybe that's just all they're going to go off of. But this game seems very difficult to cheat on. Also, the third the third girl, the fourth person that's playing with them, we don't really know anything about her. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see what her, her dynamic is as well. So, Yeah, it's a... It's been a very entertaining show to watch. I think um, you guys should watch it if you're not. Yeah, yeah, I'll catch up definitely. It's uh, it's. I'll check it out. It, like the art style is cool. The OP yeah. is really good too. Yeah. Um, oh, I love it. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely catch up on it. It's interesting. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I'll have to pick um, it up. One last thing I wanted to mention before we kind of wrap everything up is that I think most of us dropped uh, Hijimate no Gal. <laughs> it yeah. was just... It's too... Un- it, it just makes me feel uncomfortable not- watching it. <laughs> I didn't it's like... And I'm, I'm very, like, open and broad about, like, that kind of thing. Like, I don't... Like, not a lot makes me, like, uncomfortable. But, like, this show is just, like... It's not good. And then on top of that, it makes you, like, kind of uncomfortable. So it's just, like... Why would I watch this? Yeah, the, <laughs> you know what I mean. The the closest um, anime that would be similar to it would be like Bigata HK, and that show was funny. It didn't make you feel uh-huh. uncomfortable. Um, this show uh-huh. just makes you feel uncomfortable. It's just like ah, yeah, that's never fun. Yeah, this show. It's like why am it's I? It's just watching like why this? am I watching this? Like they're just trying to show like fucking um, cooch in my face, and it's just like. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like bulging, <laughs> bulging cooch, yeah. like in your face. <laughs> but anyway, glad I never. So we'll, we dropped that. Yeah, we're not. We're not gonna talk about it. Yeah, anymore. it didn't like, sound. No, and what's sad is like the art was like actually like really good. Like I, I enjoyed like the art style and things like that. It's just like it's just not not a good show. Anyway, um, 
Mark, before we kind of wrap things up, do you have like any questions, any things that you want to add before uh, we get out of here? Uh, any last last words? Sure. I mean, I know Rolando just watched the just caught up on this other series, Princess Principal. Oh yeah, it's um, good. It's good. it's good. It's it's really good actually. I showed him the trailer at Anime Expo after I had told him the name. I was like, oh, dude, you should check out a- Princess Principal. He's like, what the fuck? It's no, that spies. sounds stupid. I was like, it's about spies. <laughs> And, like, and these the girls in school, about? yeah, it's it's cool. You gotta check it out. <laughs> um, it's really kind of like not entirely, not even what you would think. Like first thing that comes to mind, like it's, first thing is like that's what the I, way uh, I think of it is like it's I, steampunk magical girl stuff. Yeah, 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 and it's like got like these like spy spy themes. Like it's like really mature, like adult. Like yeah. there's people like lying to each other. Edgy. And it's killing. not edgy. <laughs> Yeah, there's like killing. Like the first episode was awesome. Like yeah. the OP is great. The music is awesome. Well, you can't you can't say it's not etchy because I've seen a gif where like she pulls down like her dress to make her boobs like bigger. Oh, you're talking about oh Dorothy. you can't Dorothy say it's episodes. like yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess that's that's, that's true. not that's like the most etchy it goes into. That's that's the most I've yeah. seen. It's a spy <laughs> show. There has to be. Boobs I know. At some um, point. <laughs> I know our friend uh, Hobo has uh, recommended uh, this show too, so I, I I definitely do want to check it yeah. out. Uh, yeah, check it so out. I'll it's really good. The first episode will guys. probably get you hooked. It's yeah. cool. cool. The opening scene is great. The second episode's good too. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, I think. Cool. I mean, there's another series that I, I forgot about that I'm watching. It's called Made in Abyss. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. I heard of it. Um, Mm-mm. it's it's kind of different. It's got a really different art style, like the characters like really look really kind of chibi it's like they have like really small features it's about kids who live in this world where everything else was kind of destroyed but they have like this they, they live on the top of this like giant hole like abyss that just leads to nowhere um but they're trying to like recover ancient like relics and it, it's it's interesting so these, these kids have to like venture down and it's, it's got like this robot who gets introduced i don't know it's kind of weird, but I mean, the, the reason why I'm watching is because the art style is amazing. Like the whole backgrounds, the the environment is just like beautifully drawn. It's pretty great. So yeah, I don't know if there's anything else. Yeah, that's about it. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Right on. Well, uh, on on behalf of my co-host, I want to thank you for uh, jumping in on us. Uh, we'll definitely have to have you back in the future, uh, maybe near the end of no. the season, so we can have like your opinions and thoughts uh, yeah, about uh, what you thought about this season, things like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll jump um, on you guys again. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> no, yeah, but yeah, seriously, seriously, yeah. Uh, thank you guys for letting me come on here. It's it's been fun, uh, and uh, I yeah, definitely no will keep keep uh, listening and uh, taking your guys's beer recommendations into heart. Mm. Yeah. Right on, right on. Well, uh, that kind of wraps it up for us today. Kind of a longer episode, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I like uh, seeing the added content, so I hope you guys do too. Uh, Go ahead and check us out, uh, animeondraft.wordpress.com. That'll give you all of our links to our podcast, social media, things like that. You can find us on SoundCloud, uh, iTunes. um, Just search again, Anime on Draft, and check out our (laughs) Twitter, at Anime on Draft, as well as Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, Do you guys have anything else uh, before we uh, wrap it up, or should I uh, close it out? No. I think we're good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, also, check out uh, basically any of the Blast Point beers except for the uh, what? What? What do we say the the cherry one was called? Don't C don't drink Rose, that one. I think. Yeah, C Rose. Don't yeah, don't drink that one. But tart uh, cherry. Wheat check beer. out check out all the other ones. Um, they're they're pretty good. Um, but uh, yeah, from all of us here, uh, you know, take it easy, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye. Later on. Bye bye.